pace car is in. They come to green at Daytona and we're racing in the blue green duel. First laps and race conditions right here, Kevin. Yeah, and I think this is always from a driver's standpoint. I always like to be a little bit cautious on that first start to make sure that I knew exactly what I had going into turns one and two to make sure it didn't hit the ground. There was always guys on different agenda. You see the inside row with those three cars already pretty comfortable, four cars now pretty comfortable deciding to push, but you have to be able to learn about your car right from the beginning. And in, in order to do that, you have to be aggressive. Big jump to the outside, the red and black car of Todd Gilliland, third was inside uh, but the car up top Christopher Busher did not get a good start and left a big gap there so Gilliland was able to capitalize move up to sixth the last three years dual one has gone caution free the entire 150 miles uh, dual two nothing like it well this is a tricky scenario you talk about you know, Lagana, we just heard his pep talk. This is your pole sitter for the Daytona 500. The only way he's not the pole sitter for the Daytona 500 is if you wreck this race car in this race, Kevin. Well, we know it's fast, but you got to know if it handles, and you have to know if you can push, and you have to know if you can be pushed. So uh, we see the, the Toyotas and the Fords uh, with, with different body styles. We're on board with Daniel Suarez here and Ross Chastain out the back bumper. All these guys are getting more comfortable every lap. You told me there's one other reason he's staying out here and going to try to lead this thing. Well, you got to get some points. Points. You got to get points. You, this this race pays ten points, ten for first and one for tenth. So you want to get every point that you can. You see a good push from Austin Dillon. Push Larson to the lead. They elected to move down. Get in front of Joey. No help for the 45. One off. One up. Now on our scoring pylon the drivers that are trying to race in those that are not chartered cars guaranteed in the 500 are shown in yellow in the race one Anthony Alfredo Jimmy Johnson and J.J. Yaley and the story for them is very simple Yaley must finish ahead of both Johnson and Alfredo or Yaley goes home it's that simple. And that's a lot of pressure, Mike. Even though there's not a lot of cars, it's still a lot of pressure because, it's, you know, if this race does go green and it comes down to a green flag pit stop like it did last year, you have to get on pit road under some crazy conditions, and there's a lot of things that could go wrong. Third year in a row, Kyle Larson has led his duel. Those are the only three uh, that he has led in his career. He's been fast down here. He just can't quite get the, uh, the job done at the end. Wrecked in the 500. His day's coming at this place. You can feel it. Daniel Suarez on the outside, leading that outside lane toward the front and maybe to the lead. He's got Eric Jones with him, Martin Truex, Ricky Stenhouse, and more. Corey LaJoy there, fifth on the outside. I've seemed pretty comfortable. The cars obviously feel stable. A lot of pushing already, Kevin. Well, the one car that impresses me right now uh, as we ride on board with Daniel Suarez as he changes lanes for the lead there, you see uh, a Camry on the outside and you see a Chevrolet on the inside. And, and we talked about how the Fords have been so strong, but here we are with a Chevy and a Toyota leading both lanes. I haven't seen much out of the Toyotas. We covered it last night and qualifying kind of slow off the pace for speed wise. But somehow, some way, come race time, they usually handle good and push well. It's such an interesting scenario. You, you want to run fast and you want to have speed, but sometimes those cars that don't have the speed, they get in the draft and they suck up a lot better than, than what you would think they would do um, when they don't have that kind of speed in qualifying. First time in his career, the seven-time champ Jimmy Johnson has to try to race his way in, and first time he has been in a Toyota as uh, his team now has changed makes from Chevy to Toyota for 2024. Johnson has two ways to make the field. One is to be the highest finishing open car where the name is designated in yellow there on our pylon or 
If Anthony Alfredo is the highest finishing car, Johnson will fall back on his qualifying time and make the show. The biggest move is the race. I mean, you see him right there hanging on the outside up front, pushing Jones, Truex Jr. up 12 spots. Stenhouse the same way, big moves. You knew Stenhouse is going to be there. Very aggressive, always aggressive with his moves. Got there fast. Regan Smith. Mike, I spoke to Eric Jones right before he got in his race car to start this dual race. He was a little bit nervous, said a little bit worried about what are we going to have? I've got to learn this race car. I've got to figure out where it wants to work compared to what I was in last year with this new Camry body. Well, so far, the report back from him on the radio is good. It's really fast. He sounds really excited about that. Kevin, I know, Kevin and Clint, I know as a driver, when you're talking like that, it's a good sign for things to come. Yeah, and it's just it's so hard from qualifying when they're that slow to go into the day and say, I'm I'm really excited yeah. about my car. But <laughs> Feel when, you good get, about it? when you get out there and, and it drives straight to the front like like Eric Jones has, that that is a that is a great feeling. And we we look at the Camrys uh, that, that are leading the field and the front of those cars, as you see right there, is a lot flatter this year on the front of Eric Jones's car. You can see and that's meant to push better on these super speedways, uh, super speedways, which has been a problem for the Toyotas because their nose has been round. So not only are they fast, but they can push. Uh, you hear Eric Jones lifting out of the throttle right there, and what he's trying to do is back up to Martin Truex Jr. so that he can stay close enough to him to where it doesn't slow that line down. He, acts, As the leader, you actually let off the throttle in order to keep that distance to the second-place car. Well, you get out there too far, and it's exactly what happens. They get on you. They come up on you because they have help behind them. They have the energy to get on. Then they have the force to make a decision. They either have to move, hit the brakes, slow your line down, just like you said. Eric Jones was 23rd in qualifying last night. He was the fastest Toyota. Toyota. Did anybody think within 10 laps a Toyota would be leading here at Daytona tonight? Don't count them boys out. Don't ever count them boys out. Eric Jones ahead of Martin Truex, Daniel Suarez, and Ricky Stenhouse. Still green at the Blue Green Vacations Duel at Daytona. Watching from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, 
powering the race from green to checkered flag and every mile in between. Goodyear, more driven. New leader, Corey LaJoy on the outside, taking it from Ricky Stenhouse. Now, i tell you how he did it. Jimmy Johnson, he's back. Old seven time pushed LaJoy right to the front. Jamie? And Jimmy Johnson spent some time with him today, and he's back united with Earl Barbin, his longtime spotter of 15 years. They're back together. He was happy about that, but at the same time, the nerves. You could just see it in Jimmy's face. He's never been in this situation before, as you guys talked about. So he was curious how it was going to race. It's the first time ever racing a Toyota. The only feedback he's given so far is he's loose. Absolutely nothing better in a race car than success and that confidence that comes with it, right? When that baby marched right to the front, confidence goes with it. I bet you he feels much better. Barbin and Johnson won two Daytona 500s together. Where's our pole sitter, Joey Logano? Larry? Yeah, he has fallen back to 18th, and Mike, I am not a bit surprised. I talked to his owner, Roger Penske, this morning. Roger Penske has three Daytona 500 wins, but has never sat on the pole for the Daytona 500. He said, I told Paul Wolf, Joy Logano, learn all you can, but I want to make sure this car <laughs> starts on the pole on Sunday. Yeah, and that's kind of a double-edged sword, Clinton. You know, you, you want the you want the car to be up in the front of the pack to try to protect it as much as possible. I think he'd be, honestly, I think he'd be safer in the front of the pack than he is in the back of the pack. When a man like Roger Penske says, "I've never," that there's something, believe it or not, in motorsports I haven't done, and you have the chance to do that, I'm going to do it. I'd get off the race. Well, let me, let me play devil's advocate here. And, and you look at the back of the field. You've got Logano, you've got Priest, you've got Boucher, Chase Elliott. All those guys that started up in the front are in the back. So, do they have a handling issue, or did, did they decide to go back there? Well, I don't think they all decided to go back I there. So. I mean, it's just that you know, those guys did a good job. True X, Eric Jones, phenomenal job. Ricky Stenhouse leading this thing. They they're the ones that capitalize on that. One car has lost the draft. That is Anthony Alfredo. Uh, and that is of no consequence. His speed is fast enough to get him into the Daytona 500, so he won't be headed home tonight. Well, six Anthony. 16 laps in now, Kevin. Our handling is starting to show up. Yeah, and a lot of times, you know, it's going to be different with these cars than it was last year. A lot of times you hear Jimmy Johnson talk about loose, but a lot of times what happens is off of turn four, especially, you know that car will get tight. It's just the way that the banking unloads off of turn four and there's some bumps, especially if you're on the bottom. You just got to watch that front end taken off up out of the corner so you don't hit the guy on the outside. But we heard Jimmy Johnson say he was loose. Probably in a tri oval, right? A lot of times when you get loose here, that tri oval is tricky, believe it or not. And we hear a lot of guys coming in and out of the gas, and, and you'll hear uh, the throttle percentage kind of back up. And, and a lot of times that is just to keep from hitting the guy in front of you. And I think as we go later into this race, they're, they're going to be more aggressive in the spacing of, of trying to save fuel and, and trying to stay off the car in front of them to go back to pushing the cars in front of you to try to make time and move forward. Big push on the outside by Johnson. I think he got loose off of two. That gap, he's having a little bit more trouble. You can see him moving around out of the wake of LaJoy in front of him. Well, that as, line's starting to deteriorate a little bit. As he moves up like that, you have to be really careful with getting that right front fender out in the air and having that right front dig in and the car spin out. Eighteen green flag laps so far. Jimmy Johnson in the race in spot in fifth. And Kevin, understand uh, you have some breaking news to share with us. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about the, the new uh, Kevin Harvick's Happy Hour podcast that we're going to start this Tuesday, actually. So you can join me every week with uh, my new podcast and Kevin Harvick's Happy Hour. It's going to be presented by NASCAR on Fox. It'll be myself and Caitlin Vinci and uh, NASCAR's Mamba Smith. That'll be fun. I'll have somebody who can good group, uh, you know, have fun with us and, and keep us, uh, I guess, in style a little bit, maybe. I, he tells me that I'm way out of style. So, um, but you can find it wherever you get your podcasts and on social media. Harvick Happy Pod, anywhere on social media. So listen, Clint. I will. <laughs> I'll just be happy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> is, Clint, is Clint allowed to be on? I'm not sure. We're, okay. we're, we'll get through the first couple weeks and you're going to need a couple hours. Jimmy looks loose on that outside. Been watching him. 
having trouble like getting into the corner, starting to lift it, you know, get away from him a little bit, protect his position, not trying not to put himself in harm's way. So if you're wondering where are the Fords, well, there are only four of them in the first duel. The second duel is stacked with them, just as this duel is stacked with Chevrolets. And that makes it tough for the Fords because of the fact that the, the Chevys have a, you know, everybody has a plan from a manufacturer standpoint to try to work together and put yourself in position to get to the first pit stop and then get to the end of the race. The joy has been working on doing that. Just what he had finally got a gap there between first and second on that bottom took the hole. Now he moved back up for the block. The joy's making the moves. Uh Oh, now he's stuck in the middle. Kevin, yep. he gone. That's a that's uh, Daryl used to call that the sucker hole. Yeah, now he's got to start over. He tried to follow Ricky Stenhouse Jr. down to the bottom and there just was not enough room there for him to get down as well. Well, he made a block. They were coming on the outside. Jimmy moved back up in front of them. And then I think he went to go back down low. That gap had already closed. All the way to the back. Unbelievable. Boy, that was quick. He's got a little help there with Ryan Priest and uh, Joey Logano, but doesn't seem like either of them are too interested in going forward at this stage. 21 laps is what we're working of 60 right now in the first duel at Daytona. Twenty three complete and still green in Daytona tomorrow night. The lights shine brighter here as the world's fastest truckers take center stage. It's an all out battle for the checkers tomorrow 730 Eastern on FS1. Ricky Stenhouse your leader for Chevrolet Eric Jones Martin Truex in Toyota Kyle Larson Daniel Suarez in Chevrolet and then Jimmy Johnson having to race his way into the 500. Well you saw Martin pop out a line back there to uh, lead that top line and, and they're uh, they're definitely making some ground forward but that's that's what you want to do you want to strategize when do I pull out when I'm running fourth or fifth third when do I want to pull out and be the leader of that line that's coming so that you can do exactly what Martin just did to be the leader of the race if the flip side of that is Stenhouse saw it coming he wanted to move up elected to stay down I think that was a pretty good move. 
tracks. This car is extremely fast. Pretty impressive. Look up here. No quarter. 26 laps in, Larry Mack. What are we thinking about pit stops if we have to make them under green? Well, remember, the, the fuel window is about 40 to a north of 40 laps. And you've got to make one stop at least for fuel. So what I think you're going to see, Mike, we have 12 Chevrolets. I think they'll work together. I think, though, with only four Fords and five Toyotas, nine, they will work together. What you have to make sure you don't do is pit too early. It happened last year in dual one with the Chevrolets. They pitted early. The Fords and the Toyotas stayed out, stayed in line, and they made up so much ground, the Chevrolets just were taken completely out. I would say somewhere probably between 35 and 40. Thanks. Regan? Well, Mike, you see the 47 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. on the bottom there with Eric Jones behind him. Ricky's been quiet on the radio except one thing about 10 laps ago. He came on the radio and said to tell Eric Jones behind me to push a little bit more on the center. Don't get quite off center as much as he is. Eric Jones, of course, we mentioned learning a new race car in terms of the nose on the front of that car. Interesting. The commuters, the spotters communicated back and forth very nicely on the roof to get those guys to work together good. Yeah, and when he's asking him to be a little bit square, the, the, the back bumpers have a little crown to them, Mike. And, and if you get off center with the, the back bumper, it, it kind of makes the car squirrely. And with the front of those cars being flat on the Toyotas now, you want to be as, as probably more to the center than, than what Eric has been in the past. Well, Jimmy's nose is a little flatter than it was a lap ago. He just gave Kyle Larson <laughs> a little boot down the straightaway. And there Larson nestles right up against Martin Truex. Yeah, Eric looks like he's getting tight. Eric Jones, that is, on the bottom behind Stenhouse as they got into the corner there. Well, Big pushes on that outside. A lot of energy on this outside. Yeah, and this is really when this race starts to play out, and especially if it's going to go green. And right here we see Kyle Larson's hood flap flapping up in the air. And that's when, as a driver, you know you're doing a really good job staying on that bumper uh, as close as you can and pushing is that when that uh, hood flap comes up like that, all that pressure comes from underneath the hood and starts blowing that flap up. Stenhouse's car did not want to hold the yellow line that corner and he drifted up a bit uh, side drafting off Kyle Larson to get a push back to the lead. Yeah, and you'll see that. I flap. think. He, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to finish that sentence there, Mike. I, I think he's doing exactly what the latter part of that. I think he's moving up, trying to slow their their uh, their speed down a little bit with a side draft. Yeah, and that flap is straight up, guys. Both cars, the flap is straight up when they attach to that bumper. The hood, the air has to go somewhere and it's coming out out the bottom of the hood instead of staying over the top of the hood. That means that car's doing exactly what he wants it to do. Everybody comes down to Daytona. All right, can I pull up? Can I push? I want to be able to push, crew chief. That's exactly what you see Larson able to do in that Hendrick car. Flip side of that is his teammates waiting on this next duel to come out. They're lacking what they see. Josh? May have only been a couple laps yesterday, but Daniel Suarez entered this race really happy with his car. Remember some changes for the 99 team going into this year with Matt Swiderski now as the crew chief. He said the whole team sat down in the offseason. They worked on the line of communication to get familiar with each other. They looked at races from last year, specifically the Daytona 500 and how Daniel can handle the pack. Daniel said he feels a lot more comfortable this year all coming off that top 10, confident what they can do, and he's showing it out there tonight, guys. From a driver's standpoint, there's nothing better than confidence. And when you're on these super speedways, in, in my opinion, you need to race at the front of the pack because if you don't, you're racing against guys at the end of the race that have learned and pushed and shoved and done everything that they've needed to do all day to know how to lead. Look who's leading. Two drivers that have never had any luck in this race. The 19, Martin Truex, is 0 for 19 in uh, these Thursday races. And Kyle Larson in the 5, 0 for 10. But there they are, leading the field. We're going to make you eat those words, Mike. All right, we heard Larry talk. It's time, Kevin. We've got to start fine. If we're going to pit with our manufacturers, we're the teammates and everything else, try to form and execute a good pit stop under green flag conditions, they're going to have to start finding one another. Well, a lot of them, are. they're going to have to start finding one another, and, that, and they're going to have to work their way to the bottom in order to figure out how to get to pit road you have to be in that bottom lane so that's really when we're going to have to see who plans on pitting because there's two different strategies 
waiting on pit stops and don't want to miss them. So why don't we step away for a minute here with 32 green flag laps complete in the first of the blue green vacation duels. Coming to complete lap 35 all under green. Jimmy Johnson third overall in position to transfer into the Daytona 500. Martin Truex leading for Toyota Kyle Larson second for Chevrolet. A mix of cars in the first uh, seven or eight spots. One pit stop so far Anthony Alfredo and he got nabbed with a speeding ticket. Oh no. Can't afford that. Of course he will race on Sunday. He has the fastest time of the three open drivers trying to race their way in Johnson and Yaley the others. Very good reminder for all these guys out here. I promise you the crew chiefs are reminding that spotter do not speed on this green fly pit stop if we have one. Yeah you don't want to speed and you don't want to slide the, the left front tire getting onto pit road or into your pit box because if it gets a flat spot on it you're either going to have to change it or it's going to vibrate really bad and slow it down. Which is a pretty tall order Kevin. We haven't yeah. ever tried this. Haven't even been on the track at speed other than one lap of qualifying. Well that's it. There has been no practice and just single car single lap qualifying. So entering pit road at speed how tough is that going to be. Well you're going to go to the end of the grandstands I'd say and, and from there you just you have your markers from last year and you got to have notes. You got to have everything that, that that you did the previous year so that you can go out and, and execute it when you need to do this green flag pit stop. But the most interesting thing is the strategies were laid out before the race started and the only ones who really know are the engineers, the crew chief and the driver. The driver's probably got a, a sticker somewhere in the car that he's untaped and uncovered and that way he knows when they're going to pit so they don't have to say it on the radio. I'm so glad you just said that. And that being said, 12 Chevys, four Fords, five Toyotas, and they're all over the place. They're not really forming and trying to connect. I don't see it. What are they going to do? Well, I, I think they're they're all trying to strategize on just putting themselves in position to, to make sure that they can get to pit row when, when they need to and make sure that they have enough gas. And sometimes if you're saving gas, you can you can spend a little less time on pit road. Well, it could be this time. Look at that group led by Ricky Stenhouse and listen to his radio. Just keep safe. 
saving fuel like he's doing. Keep doing that. As far as the fuel save and making up ground, you're fine. Wait a minute. Save fuel and make up ground. Well, what he wants to do is they want to have a quicker pit stop. So when they come to when they come to pit road, they can spend less time putting that fuel can in there, and they're not going to take any tires, and they're going to put gas in it and take right back off. So you want to do spend as little time as possible. And you can see right there on Ricky Stenhouse's car, looks like you know the throttle percentage is definitely not 100 percent. So usually it's going to be somewhere around 70 to 75 uh, percent, depending on where you are in the pack. Well, right now. The happiest driver in Daytona is Eric Jones teammate Jimmy Johnson right alongside him. I don't imagine Johnson got much sleep last night as those Toyotas did not show speed in qualifying. But Jimmy is running the top five almost this entire race in that uh, tribute to the King Richard Petty number 84. That's Richard's four on the car and it is Petty blue and look at the hood. 510 horsepower NASCAR officials used to make you paint the horsepower rating on the hood of each race car. Well, that was way back in the day. Well Jimmy's been really aggressive as, as well Clint with his, his pushing and everything that he's done. I, I thought with the with the cars that he had to beat that he might not be that aggressive but he's just gone right after it. Jimmy's loving what he sees what he feels. He's exactly back to where he needs to be right up front where we're used to seeing him. With a good hot rod under him, right? Here, the, here comes some jockeying for position. People are starting to move to the bottom. You see Toyota's Ty Gibbs in front of Truex moving down, trying to get in position to make this pit stop when he come off the of four. Radio Whoa, chatter there it is now. Whoa, hard on the brakes, and there was a scrape up there between Gilliland and Dillon up on track as four cars get to pit road. Reddick, wow, what a save. What a last minute, last minute ditch effort down to the pit road. That was close. Fuel only. And they will hope to all come out together and be able to establish a tight draft right away. That last minute call, it may have caught the competition off guard, but it wasn't efficient. These guys are gonna come off pit road. They're gonna have to find one another, collect, and there's only four of them. Comes the leaders off of four. See if anybody else pits here. Staying out. Oh, it's open now. Well, only two. Now, that's got to be a miscue. So what's happening right now is these guys know that those guys had trouble getting on the pit road. So they may run as long as they can, like they did in last year's duel, to make up time. Stenhouse and Dylan And Dylan may have damage from that scuffle coming off turn four of the last lap. Regan? Mike, that's exactly right. They weren't ready until that scuffle happened. All of a sudden, his guys jumped up on the wall. They just asked him, do you need two or four tires? He said two. It's all on the right side. And then you see Ricky Stenhouse Jr. behind him. He's been saving fuel the whole time. Hopefully, they got enough. Well, this will be problematic because they don't exactly leave pit road together. Should find each other and be able to hook up in a draft, but it won't be the most efficient one. I don't know how that communication happened, but it happened too late. Yeah. Obviously, there was some guys that uh, didn't get the information until right there at the end, you saw Reddick get into the back of Dylan. Forces that whole group into a mess. Jamie? Well, I was listening to Martin Truex radio there, and he said, are we pitting? They said, no pit. He said, we're not pitting. They said, no pit. And then you saw that miscommunication. Truex tried to get out of the way, and he came on the radio and said, what the heck was that? What did I just do? Yeah, and sometimes that can be the problem with trying to coordinate everything when you're trying to get everybody on the same page. And Martin was trying to make a gap to get those Toyotas to pit road, but he made the gap for Ty Gibbs, and then there was no gap for Tyler Reddick to get down, and, and Tyler came down anyway thinking that he could get in there, and, and it just caused some chaos. You need just enough. Too many cars, and it creates chaos, and that's I think that's exactly what we saw. Two more to pit road this time uh, toward the tail end of the back of the pack. So let's have a look here at what happened when that first group came to pit road off turn number four. Wow. Oh my goodness. Yeah and it was just Truex trying to let him in and Tyler just Tyler started to come down and but watch Gilliland and Dylan on the outside. Dylan moves up squeezes him into the wall Gilliland in it pretty good from Martin Truex who got into the back of Tyler Reddick there. 
<laughs> that wasn't a caution beyond me. It, it was a caution. It just didn't happen. And it, it didn't look like Martin Truex was going to come to pit road, did it? But I everybody is now. Yeah. Comes the rest of them. Josh. Yeah, and for the one of Ross Chastain, they told him if the five pits, you pit four seconds of fuel, and they'll be good to go. Jamie? Same for Martin Truex Jr. Let's just get enough fuel to get us to the end of the race. No tires here for Truex. Regan. Five of Kyle Larson been up front for a little while now on the radio. He is very happy with the race car. Hasn't said anything other than the handling is very good. And disaster for Martin Truex. He was stopped in his pit for a long time. The car launched, stalled. They had to push it, and he has lost the draft. And arguably, arguably, Martin Truex Jr. had the fastest car in Clint. That's what that's what happens as we see the Fords coming to pit road now. It's kind of like, all right, you boys all had your fun. Here we come all together. And by the way, was that Ross Chastain who was nabbed for speeding? Sure was. Yes, it was. Chastain speeding. Too fast road. exiting. Lack of practice. A lot of mistakes. Easy to do. So Joey Logano will surrender the lead with this uh, green flag pit stop. He and Todd Gilliland. Here's a Chastain coming in for the penalty stop or penalty drive down pit road at pit road speed. Yeah, and that really hurt that first group because he was in the middle of that pack of five Chevrolets up in the front. And now you've got the gap uh, from the second and third place car that's going to close up pretty quick. But this field is spread out, Clint. <laughs> All over the place. <laughs> Jamie, what happened to Martin Truex? Yeah, you saw him right after I called the pit stop. He stalled it, and he said, see, I told you guys I was out of fuel. Well. So Logano trying to get up to speed after his pit stop just gets inhaled uh, by those four cars that roll right past him. Well, he did a pretty good job, Mike, because your job when you come out of the pits like that is to just get in their way down the back straightaway, and Joey Logano is going to wind up not too far behind with uh, what looks like to be Todd Gilliland right behind him. See this big line on the outside coming. Huge steam. Jimmy Johnson leading the charge. And Ty Gibbs to the inside. Three wide there. Reddit going through. Now Johnson has quite a cushion. Over J.J. Well, he had quite a cushion over J.J. Yaley. You see him falling on the scoring pylon. If Yaley is the first of those open cars to finish, he makes the Daytona 500. Johnson would go home. And I don't think Jimmy Johnson was expecting those Toyotas to leave him like that. But Ty Gibbs definitely pulled out and, and left Jimmy Johnson by himself. Thirteen laps to go. Martin Truex goes from the lead to losing the draft after running out of fuel.
the first caution flag of the night waves in Daytona up in turns three and four and Jimmy Johnson is caught up right in the middle of it. He had dropped to the back of the lead draft to protect his qualifying position. He had eight seconds on Anthony Alfredo back in the field who had lost the draft. But where Johnson was was where Daniel Hemrick got up and into the wall. Here's the melee. It's all why these groups were starting to connect again and catch one another. Well you see the the nine car come up you see the flames come out of the, the 54 car right here. You saw the flames come out and it checks the whole line Four up. wide. Yes. They start checking up accordion. Stenhouse gets in the back of Hamrick and then the worst one was Jimmy Johnson. Now I will say not much damage on that car. He doesn't have a lot of damage Clint but if we can get a shot of the the right front of Jimmy Johnson's car it's going to come down to how low that splitter is but you see all these cars check up and Jimmy Johnson's at the back of the field and they just check up harder than he expects and just gets into the side of the three as they're trying to avoid the 31. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad on the right front there, Clint. A little bump from Stenhouse was all it took to get Daniel Hemrick turned to the right into the wall. Yeah, and that's no fault of Stenhouse there. He's just at the back of the accordion. Let's ride with Jimmy Johnson. That's the view from the Creed Tour in car camera. Coming to ten to go. Coming to ten to go. And guys, I, I just, I can't, I can't tell you how hard it is coming off that banking onto those uh, skid blocks underneath the car. You see his head bouncing around. These cars are very violent when you wreck, and these guys are taking big shots that you can really see in that camera angle. Again, it was just all the groups coming together uh, from that green flag pit stop that basically had essentially three groups. They all merged together. They were coming on them fast, had to check up, big checkups, blocks, four wide. Now, all Recipe the cars involved will be in the Daytona 500 with the possible exception of Jimmy Johnson. That's the only open car that was involved. The other three are all chartered teams, so they're guaranteed in the race. Larry? Yeah, I mean, Mike, what they have to do is just keep that 84 car on the lead lap, try to make the repairs. Remember, the only car they're truly racing is the 44 of J.J. Yaley. That's who they're racing for this spot. Three former Daytona 500 winners caught up in a crash with 10 laps to go in the first of the Blue Green Vacations duel at Daytona.
Grand Marshal Dwayne The Rock Johnson will kick off the Daytona 500 when the Great American Race returns Sunday, 2.30 Eastern, only on Fox. Who will be in it? Who will have a chance to win it? Now look at our scoring pylon. Uh, not shown is Anthony Alfredo first as, because he was the first of the open cars in qualifying last night. Jimmy Johnson was second. J.J. Yaley was third. In the scenario we have right now, Yaley would make the Daytona 500. Johnson would go home. If Johnson passes him, he's in the race, either racing his way in or falling back on his qualifying time if Alfredo gets past the two of them. Yaley's only chance to be in the 500 is to stay ahead of Jimmy Johnson and Anthony Alfredo. And now there's only seven laps to go. So Jimmy knows he has to go forward. J.J. Yaley knows he has to go and stay where he is or go forwards. And everybody else wants to try to win this race. And right in the middle of all that is Joey Logano trying to protect his car to stay on the front row where he qualified. So well, Jim, Jimmy Johnson dropped to the back of the lead draft to try to protect his car, and we saw how that worked out. Watch Joey Logano in the 22 here on this replay. For why it's tough here, Clint. That's as closer than I want to be, especially when I got to call Roger Pinsky and tell him he ain't going to believe this boss. I can't deliver on that pole. All right. If you're a Jimmy Johnson fan, we're not out of this thing. I don't think the damage, old Debbie Downer here, Kevin, thought it had more damage on it. I think Clint thinks it's fine. We just got to, all right, we got to choose cone rule. Do you want to be in the same line as his 44? Do you want to try to get out of it? We got to, we got to pass him. Got to get in front of him, Kevin. Well, right now, the first thing I can tell you is the crew worked on the car none. So that means there is no damage from, from the pit stop. We've, uh, we've already chose our lane here. So we, we got to, we got to just start at the, at the tail of, of where they are. So. He has to go, and he has to find that 44 quickly. But as fast as his car has been, I think he can do it. What do you think? I think there's a little sm more, more smoke than usual out that left tailpipe of Jimmy Johnson's car. I think I've never seen a seven-time champion and a Hall of Famer this nervous oh, ever. Boy. Yeah. It'll be six to go when they come back to the line, and the race is 44 J.J. Yaley. The Aqua car against Jimmy Johnson's blue number 84. One of them will make the 500. We've seen how good this five car can push. Now it's time to see how good another Hendrick car, Chase Elliott on his bumper on this outside. it takes is one little mishap it really shakes a race up look what we've seen now yeah, and you see the flames coming out of that 54 car of Ty Gibbs on the bottom of the racetrack to stay off the back of the 99 car of Daniel Suarez see right there on oh. that outside third lane Carson Josefar haven't heard much of him whole lot of pushing going on five laps to go all bets are off look for the finish line yeah, and Carson Josevar, Clint, we talk about everything that he has as we go onto the gyro cam inside of Ty Gibbs's monster energy Toyota. Both lanes, even numbers, even up. That was Gibbs radio, second on the inside lane. Big pushes on this bottom. A lot of points on the line. 22 Logano all he has to do is keep that car in one piece so it's able to start the 500 and he will start from the pole. Ty Gibbs is having a little bit of trouble staying steady on the back bumper of Suarez on the bottom lane. Four laps left Johnson has caught Yaley. No help on that bottom. But has not passed him. One of them will make the 500. And Yaley knows it. He's been a little aggressive there. Trying to keep Johnson behind. Whoa, Whoa maybe a little too man. aggressive. Larson in command, his teammate. Chase Elliott right behind in the outside lane. 
Well, Coming we, to three to go. And we talked about Kyle Larson earlier, Clint, just how well he could push. And now we see Chase Elliott pushing him. That's kind of a, a little bit away from what they've done in the past because they've been so fast in qualifying. But it sure looks like they can be a lot more aggressive in race trim here. Hendrick Motorsports has won 16 dual races, tied with Richard Childress Racing for the most all time. Gailey coming back on the outside. Johnson on the inside. That's the race that counts right there. Neither car with any help behind him. That more importantly, they need somebody behind him. We know on super speedways, <laughs> there's nobody left. No. Here frantically trying to get another car past somebody behind them because that's all your insurance. Well, as we come to two to go here, you see how tightly packed this whole field is, and you know that this thing is going to, like, it's going to, it's going to break up, and they're going to go three wide, two wide, and things are going to, things are going to change. Let's hear some 84 audio. Need help from the 43. I need that slot up there. Outside. They're telling him, man. I know they're screaming at him outside. 43 is Eric Jones. He is Jimmy Johnson's teammate. But is he in a position to be of any help? to the 84. Larson and Suarez, Gibbs and Elliott, then Logano. And here they come to the white flag. It'll be one lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Yeah, we saw the middle of the pack there, Joey Logano get really tight. These cars are all stuffed up against each other, and they know they have to push and shove, but the handling on the 22 is definitely tight. And that tight, you said Joey Logano got tied off of four, really slowed that lineup on the bottom. Hendrick Carr is strong on this outside. Johnson is going to have to make his own lane to hold off Yaley as they battle for the lead up front. Larson edges out ahead. Elliott made the move to the bottom, went for the win. Here comes Reddick to the inside. Power move by Tyler Reddick's Toyota. And way oh. up high goes the five. Too big a hit by Bowman. Got Larson loose. Way outside is Yaley trying to hold off Johnson. Here they come to the line. Johnson ahead of Yaley and for the win. Tyler Reddick for Toyota. And Jimmy Johnson's ahead of Yaley. Look at him. He did it. That, all, that all happened off of right. turn four to the start finish line. You can breathe, boy. Boy, that was close. What a race. What a finish. And where did Tyler Reddick come from? First those boys, those, win for those Reddick. Teammates started going for it, dueling it out on that outside. Chase made the first move, went to the bottom. I thought that was the right move. And then here comes Bowman on the outside, helping Larson. A little bit too much help right in the middle of the corner. How about Reddick's slice and squeeze move down to the bottom to get the lead? Well, it's all about the timing of getting yourself in front of the right line. And sometimes you, you make the right moves and sometimes you don't. But tonight he made the right move. All right, first for the win, 45. Yeah, and that outside line is going to have the momentum. And as soon as Tyler Reddick feels like he's clear, he goes to the bottom and takes that momentum and side draft off the five car to take the lead. Oh. Three Hendrick Chevys right there, but could not capitalize. Yeah, and Alex Bowman got into the back of, of Kyle Larson, got him loose, and that pretty much sealed the deal for Tyler Reddick. But all that checkup is what, what got Jimmy Johnson back in the race because the 44 car of J.J. Yaley was, was on the outside. All right, let's watch the 84. Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, and you just, everything checked up and held behind him, JJ stayed in line, the outside. Yeah. kept help behind him. Yaley had momentum. He had to go to the outside. That was his one shot, but nobody went with him. That was an experienced move by a seven-time champion. About Reddick started 19th. Won a duel, buddy. And unnoticed in all that, Carson Hosevar, the rookie, finishes fourth. That boy's going to make a lot of noise this year. Saw his boss, man. I was picking the kids up today. Cash goes, man, dad, look at that airplane right there. It's awesome. It was Michael Jordan's. That means he's here to see his boy win first duel. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 
All right, let's listen to uh, Jimmy Johnson's reaction over the radio as he crossed the line and made the 500. That was pretty good. That was way more pressure than I ever wanted. Yep. Good job, guys. Thank you. And J.J. Ailey gave it a great fight, a great battle, had that energy, and had made the only move he could. Came up just that much short. Regan Smith. Well, Tyler Reddick seemingly out of nowhere at the end of that race. You start 19th, you finish first. How good does it feel to go into the weekend with this win in the duel? Yeah, it's a, it's a great way to start off the weekend. Man, this thing is is a beast. And it's, uh, it's a great way to kick off uh, the brand new product that Nasty Beast got. So go out and get some hard tea, have a good time tonight. I know we are. Tyler Reddick wins duel number one. And Jimmy Johnson, he was nervous coming in, never been in this situation before. Jimmy, it almost looked like you were out of it and then you weren't. Can you put this race into perspective for us? I can't. I've, I've never been in a position like this before, and I have such a greater appreciation for everyone before me that's tried to race their way in. And although there's only six more cars, I know at one time there were many more, but um, it's very stressful. I'm uh, very thankful that we got this Carvana Toyota in the race. Uh, I knew the first half of the race was going too easy. I knew I knew there'd be a challenge thrown at us, and uh, we got it just in time. So hats off to J.J. Ailey, put up a heck of a fight, had a very competitive car, and um, we were just in the right spot at the right time when the checker fell. Congratulations, Jimmy Johnson, Daytona 500 for the 21st time in his career, Mike. Thanks, Jamie. And I agree. I'm a J.J. Yaley fan. That was one heck of a battle. And if you couldn't hear the adrenaline and emotion in, in Jimmy Johnson's voice, you weren't paying attention. But I, I tell you, that's something he's never been through before in his life.